Hello everybody and welcome to another Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 video and today well I'll be taking a look at some of the things I don't like about the simulator and before you hardcore fanboys flip your lid and throw all your toys out of the cot I will be putting another video out showing all the things that I do like about Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 so just relax anyway before we get into it, hey, a huge thank you very much for all the support so far. Uh, remember to hit the like button down below. It really helps getting uh, my videos out there and getting exposure. And if you're new, please consider subscribing. It costs nothing at all except just a little bit of self-respect. So with that said, everybody, let's get into it. Okay, the first thing we're going to do, everybody, is take a look at the aircraft. Uh, and more specifically, aircraft complexity or a lack thereof. Now, being a flight simulator, uh, I'd expect there to be quite a bit of work done on putting the aircraft models together and ensuring the systems accurately reflect as much as possible what happens in the real life. Now, I will throw a disclaimer out there. These are default models, and in all the simulators in the past, whether it's X-Plane, whether it's FSX, the default models are definitely not like the study level uh, models which uh, third-party developers put out there. So. I've got to take that into account so you're going to expect um, a simplification of, of some systems but what I've done is I'm just sitting here in the Cessna 172 and what I've noticed is that in this smaller general aviation aircraft like this one uh, you don't uh, you don't notice the lack of complexity too much in fact in fact they've done a pretty good job uh, pretty much all the uh, different systems uh, that you would expect to function do function as you would expect them to uh, and it's uh, pretty much uh, as advertised. Uh, one thing in the smaller aircraft I have noticed, and this has probably been a little bit picky, but stuff uh, like a lack of clickable regions or interactive parts, for example, the window, the window doesn't open, uh, the door latch doesn't open, uh, you know, the vents, uh, also the, um, the glare shields and stuff like that. Now, once again, uh, that's stuff that you that I'm, I'm certain that third party developers will, will develop uh, when they uh, launch their versions of these aircraft, so stand by for that. Uh, also stuff like the, uh, the outside sort of components, sort of like the tie downs and the, the wheel lock and stuff like that. Although, like I said earlier, you don't really expect that on the, this level of aircraft. So what I'm going to do after just taking a quick look at this aircraft, we're going to go to the A320. And one thing that I've noticed is that as you go up into the bigger aircraft, the lack of complexity in the aircraft system becomes a lot more noticeable. Particularly if you have flown um, a few payware type jetliners like the Tolis A319 uh, or the Zebo, which is not a payware obviously, but it is a complex aircraft compared to um, some of these default aircraft. So what I would say is these smaller GA aircraft, um, pretty much on the whole systems are pretty good. Uh, but just obviously the interactive parts probably aren't as expected. So uh, let's just jump up into the A320 where, as I said, uh, things become a little bit clearer. Okay, here we are in the Airbus A320, everybody. And uh, yeah, there's a number of things with this aircraft that definitely would need improvement. And to be honest, I think it's probably a third-party developer that's actually going to put something decent together. Uh, I would say up front that I kind of understand that they want to make this game as accessible as possible for as many people as possible. So when you add a lot of complexity in, obviously that can put some people off. But I, I think there's certainly scope to have a, a more streamlined or simple aircraft system in place, as well as the option to have a more realistic simulation version. Uh, and I'm a little bit disappointed that we don't have a complex uh uh, set of aircraft systems available particularly for these jets but uh, a couple of things here firstly here, here goes a couple other pet little peeves and this is becoming a little bit of a complaint train here but I don't mean to do so it's just pointing out a few things this hut up here there needs to be a way to turn it off so you bring it up with a hotkey or something and that actually could be an option and I just haven't found it uh, but anytime you move the mouse it appears it's a bit annoying the other thing I'd like to be able to do is easily replace this aircraft by just clicking on the aircraft selecting my aircraft and it replaces it at exactly the same place that I'm parked at the moment uh, and once again that could just be a lack of uh, my knowledge of the game and I need to have a look around and find how to do that but it's certainly not uh, it's certainly not obvious put it that way so anyway with that said uh, like I said uh, as the aircraft get bigger in this game, 
uh, the system or the lack of complexity in the systems really start to, to be noticed. And, and I suppose, um, let's bring up the checklist. Uh, and it, and I, I actually really like the checklist, the way they uh, allow you to have uh, your co-pilot run through them and start things up. So that's really good, by the way. I'll put that in a different video. Uh, but this really exposes the simplicity of the system. I mean, and it doesn't take very long. For example, anyone who's flown the Airbus uh, for any length of time knows that you throw on the battery switches and then fairly early on, you're looking to align your ideas for your um, your FMC. And those are inoperable, inoperable I should say. Um, a lot of other buttons up here that you'd uh, typically use, your engine fire button, your uh, air conditioning, um, the, I think landing elevation, yeah, there's there's a number of them up here that just aren't part of the system. And then when you look at these checklists, and this is the one negative about the checklist, and it's more of a reflection of the system, is that um, it's really simplified system. So uh, if you go back to here, we've only got a checklist for before starting the engine, for starting the engine, and after starting the engine. Uh, what I would expect for an aircraft like this, particularly to help people learn it, is a checklist for, checklist for before takeoff. So you go through all those different checks straight after takeoff, for example, uh, raising your landing gear, uh, then uh, obviously enabling your, um, your autopilot, um, retracting your flaps, flaps in sequence, stuff like that. And, that. and that just isn't in here because it's, it's a pretty basic model. And like I said, Pay where developers, they'll certainly get in there. So I'm just going to autocomplete this entire page. And this is kind of cool, the autocomplete, but it's, uh, like I say, very, very simple systems. Uh, the other thing is, look, I mean, the amount of inoperable lead note um, uh, buttons and stuff here, so you've got a lack of information. When you go into the FMC, it's a very basic representation of an FMC. Uh, there's a bunch of different things that you can't put in. I mean, you can put in all the normal stuff where you go to, where you're coming from. You put in your... Um, your uh, la, 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 weight and all that sort of stuff. Where's that? It's over here somewhere. There we go. Yep, uh, your zero fuel fuel weight and your block fuel, all that sort of stuff. Uh, some things aren't simulated at all. For example, uh, let me have a look here. I've got to remember them now. Uh, flex temp, I don't think's in there from memory. Uh, or thrust, uh, your flaps and thrust here. You put in the flaps but not the thrust. Uh, so there's a bunch of different things uh, that just simply aren't simulated. And for an aircraft like that, um, you know, I'd really prefer to have a, a lot more complexity. Uh, other things like, for example, uh, when I flew the Cessna 208, the caravan, um, I don't believe the prop levers or the prop, um, the props are being simulated correctly. Uh, the, the, like the feathering of the props, uh, the manipulation of the props doesn't seem to be uh, simulated properly. Let me just auto-complete this page. So. When I started to fly these bigger aircraft, I really started to notice the deficiencies in, in, in the aircraft systems. Like I say, if you're new to Flight Simulator, it may not be a big deal. Uh, but for someone who's flown these a little bit, uh, I think it just detracts a little bit from, from the experience. Uh, so while these engines are spooling up, let me complain about something else, and that's the pushback. So I don't think... Uh, let's have a look and see whether they'll let me push back at the moment. Uh, ground services... Uh, no, it's not going to let me do it right now. It's got to wait for the engine to be spooled up. But anyway, the way the pushback works is you've got to control it from the cockpit. So you you contact the tower and you say, hey, I'm ready for a pushback. You start pushing back. And then if you've got to turn into a parking space or something like that, uh, you've got to tell them to start turning left. There's a two or three second delay. So stiff titties if you're, uh, if you're about to hit an aircraft. But that makes no sense at all. I'm in a big Boeing... Uh, sorry, Boeing. Sorry about that. That was sacrilege, wasn't it, for those uh, Airbus fans? But I'm an Airbus A320. I even got a rear vision mirror, so I can't see uh, what's happening behind me. That's up to the tow operator to do it. Uh, they need to learn something from X Plane around that, and that is to get uh, something like better pushback, where you have got an overview of the top of your aircraft and you map out where you want the tow to put you, and then send the instructions, and they do it right until it's in the position that you've asked for. So, yeah, the pushback is actually. <laughs> It's blimmin', it's terrible actually, if I'm 100% honest. Now here goes a checklist here, and see, once you've done this, um, once you've done all these, then yeah, your, your aircraft started just like that. I mean, I've obviously got my co-pilot to do it. Uh, I can go through and do the switches myself, but it's a very basic startup routine. I wonder if it'll let me do the pushback here now. So look, back to clearance, uh, ground services. Ah, oh, no, 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 uh, it's not letting me for some reason. I'll have to figure that out. But anyway, when you do a pushback, it, it's not great at all. 
so the other thing um, we'll talk about while we're in this at the moment is the camera. Uh, the camera functionality uh, is confusing at best. Now, I'm in the drone camera right here, and I actually think the drone camera is going to be one of the positive things I talk about, so watch out for that video when I do what the positives are. Uh, but figuring this out, it took me ages to configure the camera so it was actually intuitive and easy to use. It's a quite a quite a complex system that that has default keys that just really don't make sense. Uh, so for example, let me jump in here. If I go out here, this is like the outside view, like the spot view from FSX, if you remember that. But I'm pushing to the right and it, uh, it, like using my mouse, my right hand mouse I should say, I can zoom in and out. It's a typical spot view but to go up and down, you know, I'm pressing all the normal keys that I'd usually press to go up and down and it ain't working. You need to go and set those up and, and do it properly uh, and figure out what's going to work for you. But it's just what I would say about the camera system is and anyone who's used it knows what I'm talking about. It's just, it's just annoying and difficult to get it working the way you want to and what i would recommend um for those of you who watch flight simulating but it's flight simulation videos you would have watched squirrel he's a great content creator go and watch his video on how to set up the camera and he even warns in that to say hey this thing's a bit uh, a bit finicky what i would say though is once it's set up it's like i mean particularly for the um like here goes the situation yeah uh, particularly when you get the uh, drone camera set up it's uh you know, it's actually really good. I use a Xbox controller, so I'm going to put a positive in there to say it's actually really good once you get that set up. But uh, getting the camera to work properly is, um, yeah, it's a, a bit of a nightmare. Okay, so just a couple more things that I want to talk about, and then we are done and dusted. Okay, the other thing that's a little bit disappointing is the fact the game doesn't have any liveries for the different aircraft. Uh, it's a little bit petty to be honest and it's not unexpected and it's something once again that both freeware and third party developers will obviously come on board but uh, to have just the base livery for each of these aircraft it's a bit disappointing it would have been good to see some real world airlines on some of these uh, obviously there's licensing and a few other things that goes with that uh, but also just even some of these GA aircraft you know there's just if you go into liveries here you just got the one so you know maybe it's something they're going to look to monetize which is uh, what modern games do but I would have expected to at least have, you know, a few liveries available. So that was a little bit disappointing. Okay, the final thing is obviously the scenery is a massive part of this game. And on the whole, it's absolutely brilliant. But a couple of things are the lack of particle effects, which I've got to give credit to my viewers who have commented on this in some of my other videos. Um, it means that um, places like what we're looking at right now, Niagara Falls, just looks pretty average, <laughs> it would be fair to say, uh, with none of those sort of water effects coming down. The other thing I've noticed is that uh, the Bing maps that are being used in some regions are obviously way out of date. So, for example, flying over my house, uh, over where I live, the suburb is like still in building stages, and that's at least four years old, uh, which is quite disappointing, not just because it's my house, but just because it's um you know the maps appear to be quite out of date so anyway hopefully that sort of stuff can be uh rectified but uh, anyway everybody that's uh some of the things that i think can be improved with the game uh, i will put a video out uh, showing the things i do really like about the game so don't worry about that uh, but in the meantime thank you very much for watching make sure you smash that like button uh, subscribe if you are new and until next time everybody take it easy